briefly review this ceiling function. This is sometimes called the least integer function. And uh, let's just look at a few examples. Let's say 5.8, the ceiling of 5.8. Now it's defined to be the least integer that's greater than the input argument. Okay, so that would be six in this case. Yeah, this is not just a round. Uh, let me give you another example. Let's say you had uh, four point, and just for emphasis, zero, zero, one. Okay. Now, if this is a round operation, the answer would be four, but it's the ceiling function. So the least integer that's greater than four point zero zero one is is five. Okay. Now, with that in mind, let's move along. We're to find the value of this, y'all, and you can anticipate the answer being written in exponential form. The numbers are too large to write in the Hindu Arabic form. Now, a key first step, in my opinion here, there may be other approaches here, but rewrite this like this. Now, what we really just did right here is just multiply top and bottom by, uh, or divide, however you want to think of it, um, by this. Okay, and again, this is just a cleverly disguised version of one to reduce it to something that's a little simpler to work with. Okay, now a lot of you might just say that just means the same thing as divide the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. But why is that justified? Because it's equal to one. Okay, now this form right here um, looks like something that I didn't think of. Um, I'm going to use F, folks, and this ends up standing for the first term in a arithmetic, or, or excuse me, a geometric sequence, F, and then over one minus R. Okay, now this is equal to, and we have to stipulate that the absolute value of R is less than one for this to be an infinite geometric series. Okay, uh, absolute value of R. And of course, that's the same thing as saying minus one is less than R is less than zero. Okay, let me just write that. Minus one less than R. That's how to strip away the absolute value bars. It's a distance thing. Okay. Now this is equal to the first term. It's a pretty famous result. plus fr squared plus fr cubed ad infinitum okay now so what we do folks is we take this see this is the object that looks like this, right? This and this are easy to identify with each other, right? So you get one over seven thirteen as your R. One over seven thirteenths. Let me write it. Uh, your R would be equal to, and it is a definitely a number less than one. Okay, so seven to right to the thirteenth power, whatever I said a while ago. Okay, so you see, we get this statement right here. You guys can, it's just a direct read off of, of this result right here. Now, notice the laws of exponents yield these first three, four integer terms. Notice that this would just be what? This is one, when you cube this, this would be one over, I'm not gonna work all of these, but this is one over uh, seven raised to the 39th power. Okay, but that's exactly where this one that you see right here comes from. Now, the rest of these terms, folks, and I'll, I'll circle it right now. The rest of these terms, I'll just circle this object right here. This object is less than one. It's definitely greater than zero, right? The circle object is less than one and greater than zero. So what we get right here, according to our ceiling definition, you have this little tiny number added to all this, which is gonna increment this to two. So what we will get right here is seven to the 39th 
plus 7 to the 26th, plus 7 to the 13th. And again, in keeping with what we did earlier, you have the 1 here, but you have a little extra change afterwards, so you have to add another 1 in, in accordance with the definition of the ceiling function, okay? So, of course, I'll, I'll just leave it like this, but this is 7 to the 39th plus 7 to the 26th plus 7 to the 13th plus 2 is the answer to the problem, okay? All right, folks, I thought it was kind of cool how you could uh, connect this idea of an infinite geometric series to something that looked like this. It just seemed, it, it didn't cross my mind that that would be a, an approach here. And I think if you just try to do long division on this, it's kind of tedious. Let me know if, if you think that's easier. I think this way is easier because I, I would just think about, and notice that if the one wasn't here, this would be trivial. This would just be seven to the 39th power if the one wasn't here, which makes it interesting. You're dividing by a slightly smaller number, but this number is so big, you get these extra terms, which is sort of counterintuitive in my opinion. But anyway, this is the answer and uh, thank you for viewing. Let me, while I'm here, I'll just go ahead and write it. Uh, 7 to the 39th. This would be equal to 7 to the 39th plus 7 to the 26th plus 7 to the 13th plus 2. So we have the answer in its final form. Let me check. Is that what I had up down here? Yep. Okay. All right, y'all. Take care.